another issue of Fireside Chats. I'm your host, Menti. And with me, as always, are my wonderful sidekicks. First, Musco. Can I kick it? Yes, you can. And then there's Musco. Can I still kick it? Yes, you can. Still. <laughs> still. <laughs> Twice. Yeah, you this get- is uh, one of those rare incidences where there are only two hosts. This this doesn't happen often. There's been, and you know what the funny thing is? I think it's been me. It's been I've done it with Huey. I've done it with Mauer. My mic's I think we, out. I think we did uh, one of the Mando. Uh, shows oh, that's right. We did ago, do a Mando yeah. show. That's right. So we're yeah. veterans at this. That's well, yeah. <laughs> Not yet. Se- no. Senior. If people. we do this well, we'll get a Letterman jacket. Is what you're saying? There you go. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> okay. All right. And we might get to do it again. That's that's the only thing. Oh, well, that's, people that's good. People won't yell and say, never, ever again do the show together. <laughs> Tell us in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> Don't read the comments. Never read the comments. Uh, all right. So, but it is the Wednesday show. That is where we talk about the new news, the comic related current events, those things that we are known to talk about on Wednesdays, like uh, the Venom 2 trailer. And uh, Mortal Marvel Combat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's an exciting. You know what? Let's just get that out of the way because this is one bit it. of news. It's like the only video game thing. Let's just get that out of the way. Let's do uh, it. So uh, I believe it was it was it Ed Boon. I believe it was Ed Boon from uh, NetherRealm Studios who does Mortal Kombat, yep. did the Injustice games. Uh, anyway, he tweeted about the reveal of the Phase Four movies from Marvel, specifically Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Uh, so he quote tweeted saying, huh, James Gunn was able to work for both Marvel and DC. Interesting. And then he put that little confused emoji face. So <laughs> the so internet being... Mean? Well, the internet being the internet took that to mean that, of course, there's a Marvel vs. DC game in the works from NetherRealm Studios. Guys, just that's, tone it down a bit. That's I mean, just silly to, to assume that that is what he is talking about. Or it's too implying. far. No. It's too far. No, it'll like, be, hey, we're, we're going to do a DC game, and hey, we're going to do a Marvel game. We could do both games, but we're not doing them together. Could you imagine a Marvel Injustice A Marvel Injustice. I almost want to do a topic show just talking about the characters and how they would play (laughs) a a fake version of this of this game. (laughs) You you might be able to finally get that answer to, you know, who would win in the battle of and, you know, Superman versus Spider-Man. We all well, we know who would win that, but you get what I'm saying. Well, 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 in one of the crossovers, Venom was able to beat Spider Superman. We don't talk about that one. (laughs) <laughs> Everyone likes to ignore that. But, you know, Spider-Man was not able to beat Superman, though. He he definitely didn't. He tried. And he made he made some out-of-context, very inappropriate panels. Uh, all you have to do is Google Spider-Man Superman, mm-hmm. and you will get a very out-of-context <laughs> panel. That, uh, so it's a good one. It's a good one. It's one worth saving. I'll be interested uh, to see. I would love that. I would love that game. I'd buy it in a heartbeat. <laughs> And it would also, you know how you know how pissed Marvel vs. Capcom fans would be? You know how Very. mad they would be that they wouldn't get another one? Mm-hmm. I'm okay. Let's change it up. Hey, let's more change choice. it up. Let's get let's get <laughs> DC over to Capcom. Let me get a Capcom versus the DC universe and let me get a Marvel's Injustice. It would be amazing. All right. So that's the end of our video game news. I mean, Beast Boy is going to be in what, Fortnite? But I I don't think anybody cares about like, people care about Fortnite. People but I don't care know about Fortnite. Many I don't people care about listening it. to us care about <laughs> Fortnite, <laughs> and we definitely don't. So there's that. So let's just get out of video games. Let's jump into comics. To get these will probably be a little bit more intense than the rest of the news because there's a little <laughs> bit more explanation needed here. But uh, let's kick it off with Captain America. Uh, so Captain America, as we know, has been going through uh, the Captain America journey with Sam Wilson, where he's traveling uh the country looking for the thief who stole his shield uh and along the way we've met new versions of captain america so we had our lgbtq captain america which was the like the hobo captain america on the train the train yards captain Mm -hmm. america then we had uh uh, what was her name from wasn't she from philly she wasn't from philly harrisburg harrisburg that's i I don't remember the name but i know the uh the origin or the area of origin was harrisburg but was a, a black female Captain America. Very cool to see. Uh, yeah. Uh, and now we have a Native American 
uh, Captain America. So our new Captain America is named Joe Gomez from the Kickapoo tribe. Uh, and he was created by an Apache, the a writer Darcy uh, Little Badger, which is the coolest last name. Uh, and uh, it, during an interview talking about kind of hyping up, getting people ready for this character, she was talking about how she pulled a lot of Joe Gomez's personality and a lot of what he stands for from uh, her indigenous relatives. Uh, mm -hmm. She was talking about the work ethic and the pride that he has in helping his community and raising them up in a world full of superheroes and supervillains where, you know, spaceships crash in cities uh, mm -hmm. and supervillains tear down buildings. He is a part of the team that helps put the buildings back together. He's just a contractor. He's a construction worker. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's our third Captain America. I, I kind of love this. Uh, it, it's it'll be interesting to see if any of these characters come back because like they're getting their issue and maybe at the end they'll all come back for one but then they'll mm -hmm. probably fade to obscurity i'm mm -hmm. gonna say after this they're probably you're not gonna hear from them but if one of these does well if one takes off it's right absolutely that's so th that's what'll be interesting to see where some of these characters go uh, mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to see if they get picked up for other projects down the line. Like all of a sudden, how crazy would it be to have Joe Gomez show up on a like on a future uh, cha not champions, but like just on a future team of some sort would be kind of mm -hmm. cool. Uh, all right. Okay. So moving from there, we have another new character named uh, I've pronounced this wrong a million times already. Somnus. Somnus. That's what I'm going with. N U S. Som Somnus. Somnus, mm -hmm. um, we right now with uh, with Pride Month, we have a uh, a Pride LGBTQ plus book uh, coming out uh, called Marvel's Voices Pride Number One. That's going to be on sale in, in June, I believe, end of June, something like that. Um, anyway. Uh, we got some cover art that's really cool, introducing this new character who's got a a interesting tie to the X Men world. Now we don't really know what that tie is, all uh, so to speak. The character's power is to control dreams, um, but we do know that uh, it's going to take place on Krakoa. I know Krakoa is going to have a big deal with it, but it's it's cool. I mean, this character's design maybe has one of the coolest designs to modern introduced characters. I'd say in the last couple of years. Like this character's design is pretty cool. It looks like a mix of like Power Rangers and like Moon Knight. Uh, it's got it's got a lot going on. It's very very cool. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so we've got a so June twenty third we'll have a, a new mutant named Somnos. Yeah, uh, we'll, all make, right. uh, we'll make sure to get the uh, photos in the post as well as on uh, YouTube. So mm -hmm. see the uh, the video there. Um, so was it last week or the week before? That we were talking about, you know, how when comics and real life characters kind of intertwine and how no. I wasn't really a big fan of that. And I was you like, know, was I, it two weeks ago? I think it was two uh, weeks ago. Yeah, I mean, it's all rolling together at this point. Uh, so come to find out that with the, uh, you know, the Hellfire Gala that's coming up, uh, we're going to see some big celebrities actually showing up at the party. Uh, you know, from Eminem to Conan O'Brien to uh, Megan Rapino and Alex Morgan from uh, soccer fame. Uh, and then, uh, oh, Pete Alonzo from the New York Mets. I would have loved to hear what Mr. Maurer would say about him and the Mets. We're going <laughs> to we're going to go from there. Just, actually, no, hold on. Just pause for a second. <laughs> Beep you, Menti. Mets. We'll put it in. Beep Mets. Mets. New York Mets. <laughs> I just want to just want to say the Mets a couple more times. I don't really expletive, care. Expletive, expletive. Beep. The Mets. No, That's... it's gonna uh, annoy Mauer. So <laughs> beep you, Menti. Mets. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, in, uh, interesting note. Um, you know, a couple quotes on that. The uh, the Hellfire Gal will be the culmination of months of anticipation, and as one of the biggest nights in X Men history. Uh, it only made sense that the nation of Krakoa would invite some of the world's biggest stars to witness it for themselves. Um, also, uh, you know, we want to thank all our special guests for joining us for this exclusive in-world event, <clears throat> along with the incredible artists who brought them uh, to life on the page. Uh, Mike Bashula is the uh, individual that uh, is being quoted on that. He's vice president of marketing and communications at Marvel, and he and I will have a talk sometime in the future <laughs> we'll just leave it at that um i'll reach out to him yeah I, I don't know are you are you are you hyped at all for for the hellfire gala here here's what here's what i'm finding from doing the show each and every week there are certain things that i'm a little bit more versed um on and i've been talking about and 
you know, have been reading more about, and this is really one of them. So it's, it's only right for me to kind of continue to follow through and, you know, uh, at least, you know, keep up to keep tabs on what's going on with it, read it, you know, all that stuff. So I'm, from that aspect, I'm interested just from the, the show standpoint, if I wasn't doing this, I probably would skip it altogether, but um, yeah, I, I'm going to keep looking at it. I think that this is, this is, I hope is some kind of bait and switch. I think mm-hmm. the fashion element that they're doing and showing us all these designs is to make us think the book is about one thing. But since mm-hmm. the, it's a 12 issue uh, story that spans through a multitude of different X-Men books, it would, and all of this happens in that same night. I, I got to think there's something m- wilder at play here and moving into our next story. I'm going to guess these tie in together. Right. So there, there was also a uh, press release that was put out recently about um, Magneto and all the release basically said was the trial of Magneto. Um, so this is supposed to uh, come out right around August. Um, there's really no other details to this other than, you know, thinking why is he on trial? What's happening? Um, you know, we have a few months, you know, four or five months leading up to August at the well, four months leading up to August right now, what's going to happen in between that's going to put this in motion. Um, I think the next couple of stories, I mean, I think that's what, yeah. that, what you're seeing is, is X-Men set to rights. Like mm-hmm. Kakro is really popular. I have a feeling that's going to stay for a long time. Mm-hmm. Like the, the, the Island nation of Kakro, that's not going anywhere, but Magneto and apocalypse were bound to become villains again. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like Magneto, uh, as great as he is, especially as the ambassador of Krakoa and the, and we are your new gods, one of the greatest lines in X-Men <laughs> history, he has to go back to being a villain in the antithesis of of uh, Professor X at some point like, or the or the main villain of the X-Men. So mm-hmm. I, that's what I that's all I'm, I think you're seeing. I mean, because it's comics, comics in a nutshell. Right. Two years, three years, and then they come back. Look at Wolverine's death. <laughs> like everybody, mm-hmm. it's the same thing. So that's all this is. This is this is course correcting. That's all. This is their this is their version of a reboot. Right, and the, it, I mean, like you said, it happens all the all time. time. Jane Foster the time. Thor. Mm-hmm. There's all there's always stories that are retold. There's always characters that are, you know, reinvented, copied. You know, and and when you think about copying of characters, and here comes the segue. You know, there's a show out now called Jupiter's Legacy. It's like, where the hell are you going with this? I'm like, I, you know, Moscow's a smart guy. He's gonna have a point. But in my head, I'm like, what the hell? Well, you, right. So you know, with with the show, uh, and we'll we'll talk briefly about the show, and maybe do a longer show down the road. But the the show itself is it's getting killed from a review standpoint um yeah i i lean on the other side of what people are saying about this um, well, you can see you... look at the look at the scores for rotten tomatoes yeah you yeah. can see 36 percent, and i mean you know uh, i tend to agree with you know the the tomato mater or <laughs> tomater he's, he's driving around he's coming along with his his tomato uh, anyway <laughs> right anyway it's it's a low score you know as of when we were pulling numbers it was a 36 percent, which is you know terrible uh rotten as they like to say uh but we all know like that's not necessarily the score that it it goes into what you're th- how you might feel about it um but really the audience score is a little bit more accurate sometimes no Unless i agree. you're out there like you know in mass manipulating that number from a you know DC Snyder cut standpoint. Um, but, uh, audience score on is 75%. And, um, I think that that falls in line a little bit more with where, um, I feel on that. Um, I mean, we, we talked briefly about it earlier and, um, you know, from what you said, you had a hard time, you had, right? You had a hard time yeah, with not, the first episode. I didn't, I didn't enjoy it. I didn't enjoy mm-hmm. it. I, I got the, the, the criticism that everyone gave it of is that it looks like a, a fancy CW show. Mm-hmm. It's 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 a CW show with Netflix no money. That's what it is. That's it's and but it doesn't have nostalgia characters to keep me in, involved. So because I do not know about Jupiter's Legacy, this is not a, a book that I've ever read. This is not anything that I, I have any knowledge of whatsoever. Getting thrusted into this world with the, uh, I thought the acting was a little, 
a little suspect. I thought the story was a little cookie cutter. I mean, and comics, and especially these kind of comics, especially the these these uh, uh, allegory kind of comics, or there are these shows. I mean, where they are I mean, because it is the Justice League. Essentially, it's Superman. Mm-hmm. It's it's uh, any of these kind of shows tend to have that kind of formulaic approach that comics have, where they right. change one or two things to be clever. But I don't see it. To me, this just feels, especially after coming off of Invincible and the Boys. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It it feels like if if Arrow got a, a hard R rating, that's what mm-hmm. it feels like. See, if- now I like I look at it in a uh, a slightly different way. So you know, you just said coming off of Invincible, I think this is better than oh, what no I watched way. in Invincible. No way at all. Right, <laughs> right. And I know that's your, that's Not your opinion close. on that. <laughs> But I like, you know, I, I feel it's almost it's I mean, it's not the same story, but it's got all the same. It hits all the same points where, you know, it's the the father, the son's going to take over for the father, potentially. Like there's that relationship thing going on there. And then there's like the group of the, you know, the older heroes. And then there's this group of the newer heroes. Like it's all kind of the same. It the just, aesthetic it hit- doesn't fit the tone. I mean, mm-hmm. it's really bright and colorful, but everyone is depressing and serious. Like, there's no, f- there's very little fun mm-hmm. in the show. It's, and then the fight finally, you get to this crazy fight scene that just looked like the CW crossover events. Mm-hmm. Now, you did say you only saw the first episode. So, I did. when you get into the second, third, fourth, fifth episode, you start to get that, you know, the, the real deep backstory. It gets darker. Um, you know, some of the things that, you know, that first episode, like you said, is very bright and bold and uh, you're not quite sure what's going on. And I think for many people, they probably just, they, you know, watch that and were like, ah, this isn't for me and didn't really give it that second and third episode. Uh, oh, you know, we'll when see. it said, I, do you want to watch the next episode? I just <laughs> I couldn't bring myself to hit that button. Right. And, I, you know, I'll probably get killed for that. Uh, not killed, but. You know, no, I mean, I'll, look, it's, I'll probably get assaulted for that opinion. Um, I think if we've if we've proven anything on this show, <laughs> that we are a group who has a very diverse approach to most movies and shows. More than likely, somebody on this show is going to hate the thing that you like. <laughs> I've just grown to accept that at this point. Like, then, I have a feeling our next one is going to be a hated, hated show. <laughs> I don't think this is a show that's going to go well. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, yeah, go for it. <laughs> I don't even know. Like, so Modoc, we know that's a thing. Um, mechanical organism designed only for killing. I believe, I believe um, that we know that uh, Patton Oswalt's doing. It's the only show from the Offenders uh, that was announced a while back for Hulu, where it was going to be a funny Avengers style or Defenders style for Netflix approach to uh, Hulu shows we had howard the duck uh and modok but a couple of them were a bunch of them were canceled modok was already in development so they kind of let that one go well apparently that wasn't the only one and there is another show an animated one called hit monkey um <laughs> and we may have even talked about hit monkey like when this it was initially announced and it just flew under the radar but i don't remember hit monkey being involved hit monkey's a newer character a new ish character i mean he's 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 got, you know, he's got some age to him, but he's not, he's not like, you know, going back to the forties. He's, he's in, he's like a two thousands character. Um, and he's an assassin who was found almost dead by some monkeys in, uh, these Japanese monkeys that brought him back to life and they helped train him. Uh, and well, he trained himself with the monkeys and there was this monkey that that hated the him uh but who was also a lot more violent than the rest so he was banished but he like from afar would watch him train and in turn trained in, in my head i'm thinking splinter in the cage watching his master yamato yoshi uh, train in the first ninja turtles movie that's what i'm seeing right. in my head well anyway this group of assassins comes in kills everybody all the monkeys die the main dude dies and that monkey that was banished comes back with a arsenal of guns and stuff and kills everybody and now takes on the moniker of hit monkey and is now an assassin that's a cartoon that's coming for hulu <laughs> <laughs> that maybe crosses over with Modoc somehow i don't know uh but yeah that's what a shocking uh right hit monkey i mean if you see how if it goes you've, if you've ever seen that one video online of the monkey it jumps on the motor or steals the motorcycle from somebody and takes off i mean I don't know. Maybe this is I mean, believable. I guess. Well, in the Marvel world, why not? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> in the Marvel could, world. If you could have a crazy, you know, duck 
kind of doing stuff, you know, why not? So. And we've accepted Gorilla Grodd forever. Mm-hmm. We can give Hit Monkey a chance. <laughs> Um, all right, so let's keep it into Marvel. Uh, we've got uh, Miss Marvel. <laughs> really? <laughs> Keeping? Wow. Uh, anyway, that finished shooting. That's it. it. Did it? Fin- I didn't read the full on. Or I read this article, but it wasn't. Didn't they just finish shooting in Thailand for two episodes? Yeah. But there's still more um, shooting. Enough for us to, to ha- probably get a trailer or something soon. Ah, cool. <laughs> I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess we're gonna get a teaser for this somewhat soon. Um, especially with the, are, are we sure about that? Or did they just see like a bunch of vans in front of a museum? And <laughs> that's that was it. very true. That could be true. Uh, <laughs> no, I think that didn't they announce that they were finished? I forget. It doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah. It's the show's on its way. Uh, it's well on its way. So we'll probably see something soon, especially with mm-hmm. them announcing with Marvel's knowing that she's going to be a part of the new captain Marvel movie. Um, mm-hmm. I, they're going to want to really start pushing this soon. So I think we're going to start getting a lot of Ms. Marvel in just a little bit. Now we'll see, uh, we'll see Hawkeye before this. Yes. Correct? Oh yeah. Yeah. That's okay. That's wrapped. That's done. Mm-hmm. That that's post-production now. Um, Sweet. okay. And then after that, we've got some set photos from the flash. Uh, which I don't know, man. Uh, it's one of those shows that I feel like jumped the shark or, or the king shark a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, nostalgia's keeping it running. Um, I don't know how many more of these flash puns I can do, but uh, I've got uh, I've got an impulse to quit watching it before this next character shows up. Uh, impulse Bart Allen was seen on set in full Bart Allen garb. If you're unaware of who that is, that is Barry's grandson from the future. Uh, mm-hmm. who is a lot faster than Wally in the animated, um, what's it called? What movie or show is that? Young Justice, which Young makes Justice. no sense. Yep. Poor Wally got no respect in that show. Um, but yeah, imp- so they got another speedster coming. Also in the background of the photo, the set photo, showed mm-hmm. Godspeed, which I'm excited about. Although mm-hmm. Godspeed looks horrible in the Flash shows, <laughs> he's a very cool character, the the god of speed. Mm-hmm. Um, not really the god of speed, but he uh, he happened after the speed force storm so he Mm -hmm. fighting him flash said is like fighting four people at once Ah. um so he's he's what his whole thing was is to pull speed from other speedsters so every time he fought a speedster he got faster Hmm. so maybe so maybe i'll have to uh go back and watch some of this and you know maybe i'll be able to reverse my opinion on it Mm. well played Ah. well played you won't i know (laughs) you won't because even i'm uh, I love the look. I like Grant Gustin. I like the show. Mm-hmm. I liked the show. Maybe is a better way to say that. It just I didn't realize like it was going on for uh, how many years now, or how many? Isn't like season seven? Seven. Oh, I thought it was more than that. Okay. Still, still, tr- still cranking them out. And like they, oh, like for uh, I know um, Cisco Ramon is leaving. The actor mm-hmm. who plays Cisco is gone, um, so he'll be departing soon. Uh, and so will um, HR. Even though, like, he's kind of already done that, but is, HR uh, will be gone. Is Cisco going back to um, his original, you know, music career? Or no? I don't know what the actual actor's doing. The actor had a music <laughs> career. Oh, Cisco, Cisco the Cisco. Thong song. Come wow. on. Dong, 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 dong. Burn, 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 uh, yeah. Womp, womp. <laughs> okay. Womp, 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 womp. Uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's jump into movie news and Please. let's let's. You know what? How much time's left? Let's get let's let's talk the one bit of DC news before we just finish this out on the Venom trailer because that's gonna eat up everything else. So, what's <laughs> been going on uh, in the DC realm? Yeah, so uh, big news out of uh, actually, I have no idea where this came out of. I want to say <laughs> uh, it. Well, yeah, crazy stuff going on in uh, Israel right now, um, Palestine, all that good stuff. Um, but on a uh, so Gal Gadot, we'll we'll start with her. Um, she w- had an interview, uh, with, I don't exactly know who, but, um, they had asked, um, basically where I'm going with this is, uh, they, they were talking about, uh, Josh Whedon questions were asked to her. Uh, and the quote is, uh, he even said, this is from the reporter. The reporter said, uh, he even said, you should just be pretty and say your lines. You weren't going to let him get away with it. Um, which, Which really wasn't a question, and then leading she said, question ever, <laughs> right? Um, and uh, you know, Gal's response to that was no, and um, she then stated, you know, what I had with Joss uh, basically is that he kind of threatened my career and said if I did something, he would make my career miserable. 
I handled it on the spot. So, you know, a couple weeks, months back, she really didn't have much to say about what was going on. And now this comes out uh, straight she from said, her. She said they, we had an altercation and they settled it. Like that was yeah. it. She she did not want to go into detail. And to mm-hmm. be fair, she could have just left it at no. Right. I, now, the fact that she kept talking is unique. That's the most I, interesting. Yeah, I think now this. because, you know, the whole the movie's out, you know, back when a lot of the stuff was coming oh, back up. Oh, interesting. That's yeah, interesting. So now to that not, it's so... kind of over and done with, you know, you don't really you can kind of separate yourself from that. To not hurt her relationship with Warner Brothers. Right. And now Interesting. Yeah. That's an interesting way to look at it. Cuz mm-hmm. she 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 got brought into the the Ray Fisher Joss Whedon uh mm-hmm back like uh, over and over and over they kept bringing her back up about he would joss would yep. uh, brag every time they got into a fight like he she her name got brought in jason momoa came to his defense um mm-hmm. a lot of the crew came to his defense but not a lot of the cast did so gail yep. godot is a big one like, yep. that's a that's a this the fact that she kept talking it tells a lot yep she's your you know third pillar i would say to uh that universe and that's yeah, a big I mean, one. she's a big star now. All and right, she's we Fast and Furious four. Anyway, moving on. We have we have to just gush or be disappointed, depending on which side of the camera you're on here, about this Venom trailer. So Venom, <laughs> uh, Venom two, the uh, Let There Be Carnage trailer finally dropped. People have been asking for it for a bit now. We finally got a chance to see it, and it's be. I I don't see a lot of negative reviews to it. I personally am a little suspect of this trailer just because I have a deep-seated love for Venom and Carnage. It is what got me into comics. So this is one of the few times where I'm not as keen on change (laughs) as I can be. Uh, Mm -hmm. This is one of the few times where... And there's some changes that they're making that I I don't know how I feel. (laughs) And a lot of it still stems from the first one and uh, just problems I'm going to have because of the first movie. But there's some things that Andy Serkis, who's directing this, has already said about this new one that also makes me very suspect. So before we get into that, Moshko, thoughts Mm -hmm. on the trailer? Uh, I'm just overly excited to get new content if if that makes sense um you know past year or so has been you know some things have been coming out and we've been hearing a lot about you know certain movies but you know everything just kept getting pushed and pushed and pushed uh so i watched you know i saw the trailer um i didn't dig into you know frame by frame trying to look at everything i just kind of took it for what it was worth uh i enjoy you know tom hardy so, you know, he can paint a house and I'd probably kind of check it out. Um, but, uh, right. <laughs> you mean yeah. check him out? I think that's no, what you meant to say. I'm pretty no. sure the way you just worded it, the way you wanted to say. Yeah. You know, you go <laughs> you for a little a, bit of a little bit of a little bit of a crush. Like, yeah, I'm hearing it. It's OK. Well, we all have our man crushes. Yeah. It's all right. I mean, it's, you can have more... yours with Tom Hardy. <laughs> uh, it's a good choice. It's a good okay. choice. Thanks. Thanks for stalling. I, I still don't have a comeback for it, so <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna move on. Um, good to see Woody Harrelson back in uh, mm. some movies here and there. That's um, not one that I want to see him in, though. Right, but come on, he's he's he he's good. He doesn't scream Cletus Cassidy to me at all. He looks much right, better that's, without that stupid wig and that stupid the, yeah did carrot you, did top you, wig. And you saw that, um, like people were questioning that, like. There, everybody's like, you know, great that that happened, but people weren't actually looking into it as, you know, that's showing a, a passage of time from, you know, the uh, the end of uh, Venom to now part two. Um, so I don't know what the time frame looks like. Uh, I don't care. Aesthetics are important to comic book <laughs> movies, and he looked dumb. Mm. Get rid of that mop top was awful. <laughs> he looked like Raggedy Andy. It, mm-hmm. No, we don't we don't need any of that. And it, just the dialogue from that scene. Ugh. Mm-hmm. There will be garbage. Yeah. God, I roll. Oh, he just doesn't, it doesn't feel like carnage to me. Um, mm-hmm. And tease for Saturday show or Friday show, excuse me, <laughs> algorithms, right? Friday, Friday show. Uh, we're going to do a, a bit of, we'll talk more in detail about carnage and how he kind of relates to the, how, who carnage is, but also mm-hmm. how he relates to this movie. But uh, yeah, the trailer, I don't know. I didn't like, I still don't like venom talking to the symbiote like that. Like that's still kind of new in the comics. 
Um, mm-hmm. The fact that they have this, like him singing a song while making breakfast was a little hokey to me. It just doesn't feel like <laughs> Venom or Carnage to me. I think that's my biggest problem. It just doesn't mm-hmm. feel like them. Um, it, like him, uh, no. Uh, the whole eating Miss Chen part. Like if he's is he if he's he, is he villain is he hero at this like who is he at this point he's eating old ladies. <laughs> so how, how many times did you watch the trailer? Three, three times, and and your feelings toward it. So under under the first viewing, how did you feel after it? It just if I, I I'm disappointed. I it, I felt disappointed because it reminded me of the things that I didn't like about the first movie. Look, mm-hmm. I will never get over the symbiote saying that he was a loser on his planet. I will never get over that because that makes no sense. That mm-hmm. little pile of goop was bullied on his planet, which makes n- what? It's would you had time out in school? Would you get detention? Like how? Uh, that's not how the Clintars work. <laughs> it's not mm-hmm. how they work. Uh, so I can't fathom them being like a social hierarchy to that degree where he's getting picked on. It's just I don't know. So them talking yeah. bothers me. So this moment he opens with him singing and cooking, I'm I'm already out. And then I will say he did better. Uh, Cletus was better in this because I loved like what he got really like sadistically sentimental at the end. Mm-hmm. When he's talking about how much he loves him and stuff like that. That's okay. We're getting into more Cletus territory. Uh, mm-hmm. But one of the biggest things that we found out from Andy Serkis is one, uh, this is not taking place in this, in the MCU. So right. this is not an MCU story. It's still in its venom own world, which still kind of makes sense. If it's true and we get some kind of multidimensional uh, tr- version of Spider-Man 3, like if we get Spider-Verse from Spider-Man 3, that mm-hmm. kind of opens the door to bringing Venom in. So they, that we also saw a picture of the Daily Bugle horn, and the logo mm-hmm. looked very similar to Tobey Maguire's. So mm-hmm. it's a possibility this takes place in the Tobey Maguire world like the Morbius movie does. Right. Uh, well, that's the rumor. Uh, How about the I, uh, when they were flipping through and somebody took a screenshot and it says, you know, Engers in in one of the uh, the bylines. Um, well, they they name dropped saying, uh, they named up Doctor Strange in the Sam Raimi Spider Man movies. So, right. But do you do you think that's actually Avengers? On that, it might be. Page? It might be Tobey Maguire's Avengers. We've never seen them. Good point. I mean, who knows? All we know is that Andy Serkis said it's not in the MCU. So it's, mm-hmm. it's got to be one of the <laughs> other ones then. Um, but he also said, which annoys me, is that he has a new ability where he can turn into mist. So v- he can move like mist. Like think of the new Mortal Kombat movie, which is bad. I don't I'm sorry. I'm not. <laughs> I'm with I'm not, you on that. I thought it was terrible. Terrible, so. terrible, terrible movie. Uh, but when Sub Zero kind of just floats away and becomes mist, that's how they kind of have Carnage moving, which uh, it goes against what I know of Carnage. I mean, I know <laughs> Carnage is Carnage is not your normal symbiote because the Carnage symbiote actually went into his bloodstream. So in an open wound, mm-hmm. the actual symbiote goes into his blood and binds with his blood. So Carnage is essentially Cletus, and Cletus is Carnage because they are one and the same. It is the blood that makes up Cletus. So that's why he refers to himself as I and not we like Venom mm-hmm. does. Um, but the way that he works and the reason that he can throw projectiles and stuff out is that the symbiote that leaves him crumbles at like an old scab that just crumbles away at like minutes after doing anything. So if you if you knock a sword out of his hand that he made from his blood, it will crumble into dust shortly after he lets go of it. So how would you turn into mist? Maybe I don't understand mist well. Maybe that's my problem. Maybe I'm just dumb. And maybe no, but I, I, is it mist like disconnected vapors of water? Uh, it's yeah. I Isn't mean, that what that is? So if that's the case, would it crumble? So Niagara Falls, right? You've seen it in one way or another. You've you've seen it. You know all mm-hmm. the stuff that's the water's falling and everything's just going up in the air and into the vapor. Yeah, but I mean, as, it, mist. as it disperses, like, unless it can mist keep itself, I don't know. I don't know. All I'm saying <laughs> is I, I, there's some, I got some issues with the, the movement here. And they, they're doing it to try and figure out a way, because they want him to move more, like, f- like fluid-like to right. differentiate him from Venom, because they want Venom to be this hulking beast, and they mm-hmm. want him to be, which he is. He's like a slinkier, although, first off, I, I hope they show this, wildly stronger than Venom, like, 
mm-hmm. on not even close power scale wise like carnage is stronger than spider-man and venom merged into one like dude is wildly wildly powerful so i i hope we get that i hope we i hope this turns out to be carnage and i hope woody harrelson really kills cletus because cletus <laughs> is the joker of marvel right like, this is a big it's a big role and i, I that's who i want to see i want to see joker Mm-hmm. I want to see a I want to see a Joker that is so demented that even the Joker wouldn't like him, and because that's mm-hmm. carnage. Side story, which we didn't put in the in the uh, the show. Um, there's continued talks of Joker two. Oh, that's right. In production. Yeah, apparently that's still in the works. Which yeah. So I don't know. I, don't, I mean, I I would I kind of love that and hate that at the same time. If that makes mm-hmm. any sense. Because yeah. it was such What's a good the, movie, it doesn't need yeah. a sequel, but yeah. I'm okay to revisit it. Like, I'd be, all right, I'll see another one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a different world. We'll see. All right. Well, again, we got check us out of, on. Yeah. Plenty of carnage talk coming your yeah, way. I got a lot. Of, we got a lot, <laughs> a lot of carnage. I have a lot um, of learning to do. <laughs> but yeah, if you like the show, by all means, like, Wait, hold on, hold on, hold rate, on. Comment. Oh, oh hold okay. on, hold on. All right, Menti. Right, Menti. Do that thing. If you like the show, you know, <laughs> go to welcome to fireside.com. Go to our social medias at welcome to fireside or pretty much everywhere, unless it's Twitter, which is fireside crew. But again, the liking, the commenting, all of that engagement stuff is really the, the, the best way for us to grow. So the more that kind of stuff happens, Tara, first off, I think you're like the only person I've ever seen share like damn near every show. So big kudos to Tara for that. Um, but yeah, once again, I'm Menti. I'm Moshko, uh, and I'm Moshko, because you know, yeah, I was on her twice today. <laughs> you were introduced twice. I get it. Yeah. Um, he, yeah he kicked cool. it, and he kicked it some more. And I'm going to kick the, kick in the, never mind. Wow. Um, <laughs> right, 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 right. Are yeah. you going to do kick in the doorway with the 4-4? Four, four? Is that where you're going? <laughs> yeah. Don't, yeah, don't, yeah. All right, we're I done there. I, that might be the best visual in my of, of all is to, is to see Moshko. <laughs> <laughs> All right, deuces. Hey. Wait a minute, you're still here? Go check out another video, subscribe, then come back. All right, I'll see you guys later. Go, now.